Hi, this is Will here with this week's Mission Insight. And today, I want to start by talking about waffles. Well, kind of. See, when my daughter Zoe was three, she loved waffles. She wanted them every day, and back then she didn't have the kind of muscle memory uh, to cut them up herself. Um, so as a good dad, I would cut them up into bite-sized pieces for her so that she could eat and enjoy her waffles. Now, fast forward 12 years, and Zoe's 15 now, and she still loves waffles. Now, if you saw us today going out and having breakfast, and you saw me cutting up waffles for my 15-year-old daughters, that would seem a little weird, wouldn't it? See, the point I'm trying to make is, is there's a lot of different resources um, that we have access to. Um, we live in this amazing point in time um, where our access to knowledge is almost unlimited. Uh, we can go online to YouTube and watch a sermon on pretty much any passage of scripture. Um, we can go to a church building and, and hear different teachings and perspectives. Um, uh, there's an entire industry of apps and books, audiobooks, conventions, podcasts, catering to Christians. And they're not in and of themselves bad things. I, I personally think they're amazing. But if you're like me, sometimes it just seems so easy to go to the experts or hear, to hear someone else's opinion on a passage that they become the resource for understanding scripture. Um, see, like I said, these things aren't bad, but they can sometimes be a substitute for me. And especially if I, I want to share Jesus with someone, uh, it just seems so much easier to point them to a sermon or a podcast or a preacher. But it's not a game of hot potato. Um, each of us has been called not just to be a disciple, but to be disciple makers. Um, this isn't something that you can abdicate or put on someone else. So now at 55, I think I'm a bit too old to have someone else cutting up all my waffles for me. 2 Timothy 3 tells us, um, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching and showing people what is wrong in their lives. It's useful for coaching, uh, coaching faults, and teaching how to live right. Um, using the scriptures, um, the person who serves God will be ready and will have everything he needs to do every good work. Now, as a Christian, we know the importance of scripture, but we're talking about reading the Bible here, and it can seem really daunting. It's a big library of books, so how can we take this and make it digestible so that everyday people uh, can go to any passes of scripture and not only learn and apply them to our lives, but also share them with others? Well, we have this tool you may have heard of uh, if you've been at FCC for a while. It's called a Discovery Bible Study, or DBS for short. Now, a discover, Discovery Bible Studies are powerful tools to help people discover who Jesus is. They're happening uh, around the world, and they're a huge part of disciple-making movements everywhere. And I think the power of this is that it's so simple that you don't have to have a seminary degree or be an expert on a passage or a book or whatever. Anyone can facilitate a DBS. It begins very relationally, just by checking in with each other. What's something you're stressed about? Or um, what's going good? What are you thankful for? It begins very naturally. And a DBS is basically focused on helping you and helping people discover Jesus in three ways. So from our heads, to our hearts, to our hands. So part of the discovery Bible study is just our heads. Um, someone will read a passage of scripture, uh, and then you can, you can pick the, the passage of scripture that you're going to look at, but if, if you're looking for a place to start, take a look through the Gospels with stories about Jesus or any of his many parables and start there. And after you read it, someone will summarize it in their own words. And then there are three basic questions. First is, what does this passage say about God or about Jesus? The second question, what does this passage say about us, about humans? And this is where things start to move from our heads to our heart as we look inwardly. And the third question is, um, if this is from God, what will you do this week to put it into practice? Something that you've learned from this passage. Um, and that's when things move from our heads to our hearts to our hands, where we're walking in the steps of these words and obediently following the way of Jesus. 
Um, this is called an I will statement, um, where the words don't just stop here, but we put them into practice. And it's okay for this to be challenging to people. I, I know it is for me. So I wills don't just help me with what I've learned. It helps keep me accountable to what I said I would do. And, and it can be a process, sometimes um, taking one step forward and then sometimes two steps back or vice versa. Um, but there is movement in our walk as we pursue Jesus and walk with others. You don't need to be an expert. You just need to be willing to pick up your role in God's story and be willing to share it with the people that God has placed in and around your life. Now, and whether they know Jesus or not, or, or maybe there's someone who, who would never go to a church, DBS is a tool that is so simple. Anyone can host a, a Bible study and help others discover for themselves who Jesus is and how much he loves them. And if you need any more help with uh, Discovery Bible Study topics or questions, you can always uh, send me an email at wwalker at fremont.church, or you can just find me in the atrium on Sundays, and I'd love to talk to you. Have a great week. Thank you.